Hello everyone, I'm here with Strider from Pirates in Pyjamas. We're here to talk about the main event, the bracket, how they got here and all of that. And I believe we're also getting the official Strider face reveal as well, I've been informed. So I'm sure everyone will be very appreciative of that. I wanted to start with uh, what has the team environment been like leading up to this main event? How have scrims been going? Are we feeling confident or maybe a bit apprehensive? What's the, what's the vibe? Scrims are definitely, they're positive. Uh, I think at PIP we have a really good like working environment. Even though we don't win a lot of our scrims because we're generally trying to scrim upwards, we, um, we're definitely learners in scrims. We're always talking in between maps, during maps a lot of the times about what we're doing wrong. So that's good. Um, we're definitely, just as of results, we're, we're doing well in scrims. I think we're, we're really excited about our chances here. I think the way, it's, the way it's fallen as well, especially with Timeless sort of dropping out, it's really opened the door massively for a load of the teams for those last two spots for Dallas. Mm -hmm. So have you guys ramped up the sort of practice schedule and everything in, in anticipation to try and be ready for this main event? Um, not really. I guess we, we've been keeping it steady over the past couple of months. Um, me and Mateball, about a week ago, we had a bit of a doomer moment where we realized we needed to get top two to qualify, assuming timeless luminosity m80 and those guys don't just completely drop out of the tournament mm. um that happened <laughs> oh, yeah. a bit of a timeless flop <laughs> so we got a bit lucky top two it it, it was always possible right toronto is mm. definitely the number one team everything else is kind of a uh, on a more even playing field um it was possible but top three is a lot easier so yeah. we're we're very glad about that and we think we can do well Ben, I want to ask a little bit about the team because I think you've obviously been around or between you all, you've been around quite a while, but I wanted to try and get a bit of the inside track. So I'll give you a, a series of categories and you can maybe tell me which of the players on your team you think fits the category the best. So if I was to okay. ask you who the funniest player on the team is. Maple. No doubt about that. No doubt. It yeah. is. So there's two types of funny, I think. There's sort of funny is in like he makes everyone else laugh. He tells jokes. And some people are funny, maybe less, in not intentionally funny, you know, they're just, the things they do are a bit unpredictable or funny, which, where on the scale With is Maple, he? With Maple, I can't tell if it's a bit or if, it, if it's just <laughs> Maple and it's his personality. He'll just <laughs> ramble to himself, like, mid-map about what's going on and, like, solve problems, problems in his head. He's, uh, he's really funny to be around. I'm not sure if it's a bit. I'm not sure if it's just him. <laughs> And then, who do you say is the, the hardest grinder who's putting in the most, or who's always on ranked? Um, probably, probably awesome, Mateball. Not exactly in the ranked category, but that guy is always vodding, always looking at things, always like typing in the notes channel what he thinks. Um, I think I used to be a big rank grinder. I'm not so much anymore. I haven't been having as much fun with it. Um, not like real ranked grinders in the team, I don't think. I could be I could be lying about that. And then who would you say it doesn't actually need to be in game intelligence, but who would you say is the most intelligent on the team? Mm. <laughs> Ego aside, I do I do kind of think it's me. I I I'm generally <laughs> the one making the fight plans and talking. I guess um it's hard to say intelligence, right? Because I'm I have like a lot of different set plays that I do. So I'm not the one thinking um, mm. like outside of the game and making those type of plans, but I'm the one thinking inside of the game and talking about it in the game. So it's a, uh, it's a bit of both, I guess. And then who do you say is the biggest complainer on the team? Always moaning about something or. No, nah, we don't have any complainers. Oh, okay. When we get, when, when somebody complains, we yell at them, you know, yeah. it's all, uh, <laughs> it's all positive reinforcement on the team with some, if you're terrible, if you're the one bringing the team down, like kind of mentally, then it's then it's negative reinforcement because, well, you yeah. know, it, when you're the underdog coming into different tournaments, you have to have a positive mindset. You have to be prepared to lose and, and learn from it quickly. You can't get bogged down. Yeah. And then if I had to ask, who's the most skilled person on the team? The person who just sometimes does stuff in scrims and you're like, how have they managed to do that? Oh, that's chronic. Yeah. And Chronic is insane. <laughs> I mean, you've seen the highlights. You've seen yeah. the, the Tommy Than videos. That guy's just absolutely insane. Hitting all the headshots. 
And then you were saying, if we talk sort of like in-game comms, are you sort of then the main caller? You said you sort of refer to a lot of set plays. Who else are the sort of most vocal people on the team in terms of contributing to that? Um, me and Maple definitely at the top, but I think everybody definitely has their own role in the comms. This meta, it's very like, uh, it's independent what you want to do. Sometimes you want to play for your sojourn and your sojourn needs to call those things because you can't really talk for her. Um, so it is everybody talking. We don't have any quiet people on the team. And I think that's a, a big part of our success. Yeah, no, I think especially in Overwatch, there's, there's very few metas where you don't want everyone talking and everyone contributing. Yeah, for sure. So then if we look uh, at the group stage, your group stage when ultimately it probably ended how most people would have expected with you coming second mm -hmm. out of a group. But the road there was a little bit more dramatic than maybe a lot of people expected. Could you talk us a bit through maybe initially what went wrong in that M80 series where you sort of find yourself two maps down at the start of it? Um, man, there's a lot to say about the M80 series. There were so many things that went wrong in the first couple of maps. We were not playing like ourselves as a team, no confidence. But I think once we went down 2-0, we, we all kind of got into the mindset where, okay, our strongest game modes are coming up. Um, we're down 0-2. Let's just start making plays. Let's just start going. You know, there's nothing really to lose. We're, we're still the underdogs. So it's not like we're being uh, beaten by a team we shouldn't be. Um, so it really was just kind of a mentality of let's go. Let's make plays happen. Let's beat them. And uh, that kind of turned around the series. When it came to the map five, classic pip map five, um, <laughs> we started off so strong. I I'm still not 100% sure what happened. There were some old planning mistakes. There was definitely some fight placement mistakes. But uh, those things have been cleaned up, so shouldn't happen again. Should be a clean 3-0 next time. Well, yeah, you got yourselves, uh, especially in such a good position as well, with you start off with a full cap as well. What was uh, what were the comms like then, especially because obviously they full cap as well and we go into this overtime round and it's short time for both teams. What are the comms kind of and the atmosphere in the team like uh, in that moment? Um, It was really great. I mean, I I don't think there were massive comms mistake or like like planning and strategy mistakes overall. I think we we did what we planned to do beforehand. We, we, we stuck to our mm -hmm. guns. Um. If you remember, we started out in the Wrecking Ball on Junker Town Attack, and then uh, we really wanted to stick to that and play for the Chronic Widow. And I forget exactly what happened, but we wanted to end up pivoting off of that, and that, that could have been the reason we lost, but it's it's hard to say. Yeah, I mean, I mean all, all things sort of said and done, it's, it ultimately just came down to, like, Pelican had one crazy moment at the end where he just happens to do yeah. the exact eight combination of 12 things he needs to do to win the series for his team. So I think it really, even up to that last moment, it could have gone either way. Um, Absolutely, yeah. And and you mentioned playing a bit of ball there. I wanted to talk to you because we did have a patch between both group stage games and everyone maybe anticipated or thought if anything's going to change, ball is going to come back. And then everyone's thinking, well, who's who's good at ball? And your name was probably at the top of a lot of people's list. We've obviously had a little bit of time to play with it. Have you found their act the ball changes have actually really made it any more useful than it was previously? Uh, long story short, no. <laughs> I, I was at school the day of the patch, and I was like watching Chasm play on on my phone. I thought it was going to be insane. I read the patch yeah. notes. I thought this is going to be incredible. It's ball meta coming at the perfect time. <laughs> the changes did not stick at all. <laughs> um, the biggest changes were the the quality of life shield change, but. Yeah. Uh, the shield patch is just, it, it was underwhelming, surprisingly. We tried to make it work, but it's its still just not strong. It's not worth it. So then ultimately, and this is kind of what, it's going to be sort of a lot in like a, a lot of your series is you ended up playing what I think most people have come to the consensus of is the meta in terms of playing a good amount of Arissa in most places. Um, so obviously you're playing a lot of that. What do you feel are the things that maybe separate the best Arissas or the Arissas who do the best? compared to the rest of them i think like general orissa macro is is pretty simple you don't really see many different orissas just get it wrong completely there are different play styles i think i have a, more of an aggressive play style but there's nothing like wrong with most of the orissas i think the biggest difference is just 
uh, shot calling, your, your comms, it then definitely spears. This is such like a magic pick meta where you can just completely win series just by getting yeah. picks before the fight. I think Landon was talking about that a lot in his interview. Mm. Just random kunai's headshots from Sojourn or his spears. It's just a magic pick meta. Oh yeah, a good meta to have someone like Chronic on your team, maybe for example. Oh for sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then we've seen a, a teams start to maybe shift a couple of different ways in terms of playing either Kiriko Sojourn or Bap Cass. Where do you sort of sit on that sort of like scale in terms of what's better or is it just a, a map thing, a comfort thing? I think it's partially map and partially comfort. I think if you have a team like Landon and you're playing, you should probably stick to the Baptiste in most scenarios. You just have the best Baptiste in the world. Um, I mean, Chronic has always been a very dominant Sojourn, so we want to lean towards that. It's map dependent, and it's hard to tell. And even in scrims, you know, we, we've been spending weeks trying to figure out what's best or if there even is a best. It's up in the air. There, there isn't one that's just always better. Uh, but we've definitely leaned into the Sojourn Kiriko more than anything. Yeah. And then if we look now to the main event itself, this is probably going to be the most high stakes tournament of the year so far, just because there's now so many teams, you, um, Luminosity, M80, FMCL, and Students of the Game, all have a chance to get one of these two spots to Dallas, which means almost every game you're going to play in this main event is going to be life or death for both teams. Super high stakes. Mm -hmm. So how are you planning, or is there anything the team's talked about in terms of how are you going to handle the fact that it's going to be high-pressure moment after high-pressure moment, and it's going to be probably the most pressure you've had all year? Um, I think our team has always done like reasonably well with dealing with pressure, so I'm not really too worried about that. I think, I, especially one of our advantages coming into it, is that I think the pressure is not on us. It's on the enemy team's. You know, if you're if you're an eighty, you're feeling it during map five versus pip. You don't want to lose. That's your contract. That's your salary. Mm. We're not paid. Uh, we're paid some, <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, but no, yeah. XPXG. Um, <laughs> but really, I think the pressure is on them, and I think every single series for us, it's it's always winnable. But um, the pressure is on them to succeed. It's it's not up to us. You know, we'll do the best we can. Yeah, and I mean, especially in this in this particular meta, we've seen so many upsets already. It certainly seems to really lend itself to whichever team is just in form on the day or is able to capitalize off these like small moments can really just snowball the series away. Um, yeah, this is definitely uh, play your best on that day, and you're going to be the better team. If you start a series out strong, you're just you're probably going to win it. And then I wanted to ask you about your first series because as I've been talking to a few people from different teams. One team name that keeps coming up of someone who seems to be doing slightly better than everyone expects is Students of the Game, which is your first opponent. So how do you feel about that opening match? I'm pretty confident. Um, I, I see their five players, I see our players, and I, I like my team more, to be honest. <laughs> um, I think uh, we haven't looked at their vods very much. We probably will more in the coming days. Um, but we really are just focusing on ourselves. We haven't actually scrimmed them much at all in, in this patch. So, um, I don't know. We're just going to go into it and play our game, and I think we're going to win. And then, maybe for some, maybe Toronto's always the obvious answer, but if we exclude Toronto, who are the teams you're maybe most worried or you think will be the toughest match you might run into at some point in this tournament? It's, it's a toss-up. I, I really do mean, like, teams to, uh, second place to seventh place are just absolutely even. Like, it really does just come down to every single day, like, who is playing better on that day. I guess the, the, better, the best teams are probably going to still be M80 and, uh, and Luminosity. Um, especially M80 players coming into NA and getting off ping, I think, is a big deal for them. So that should help their roster. But I also don't really think their problems were their, their Korean players on ping. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, Pelican seemed to be doing all right before, I think, even on 220 ping or whatever. I think <laughs> he wasn't, so. didn't seem to be holding him back too much. Well, maybe we'll find out. But And then if I, if I ask you to then say, do you still then feel that the way you described it as second to seventh, is Toronto still just sort of in this untouchable spot kind of at the top that no one's quite close enough to reach yet? 
I think you don't plan as a team to beat Toronto Defiant. I, I still think every single series is winnable going into it, especially on this patch. But uh, you as a team don't like put your firm your your foot in the ground on beating Toronto. That's just not a. Yeah. It's not realistic. No, I think I think that's fair. I think that's reasonable. I want to thank you very much, Strider, for all your time and taking the time to talk to us. And wish you and the guys best of luck in the main event this weekend. I hope it goes as well as it can for you. Thank you very much. It's been fun.